The SEMA Auto Show is a very cool annual event that showcases the best in automotive innovation and customization. It ranges from draw-dropping custom cars to cutting-edge aftermarket parts. SEMA brings together passionate car enthusiasts, industry professionals, and manufacturers from around the world. It's a fun and fast-paced environment where automotive creativity thrives. At SEMA, people from all over reveal mind-blowing concepts, and in so doing, they pave the way for the future of the automotive industry. The first ever SEMA was in 1967, and since then it has grown into one of the largest, most influential automotive trade shows in the world. This is the first time that the whole crew at X-Overland has been able to attend the SEMA Auto Show, partly because it's the first time we've had our rigs being featured in the booth at Toyota, which is really cool. It was a pleasure to talk with some of our partners and meet a bunch of fans. We want to thank all of you guys for continuing to watch the show and support us. We cannot do what we do without every one of you guys. Thank you. We are here at Goose Gears facility, and there she is, our Sequoia. We haven't seen it since SEMA. From SEMA, Brian from Goose Gear took it and has been working on developing the full system for it. So it's gonna have a 60% delete sleep platform, dual drawers coming out the back, um, and he's pretty much used our Sequoia to develop a whole new product for the Sequoia line. So we're excited to check it out and see what he's come up with. We also have the alley cab tent that is going to live on our truck now the one that we put on before uh sema was one that alley cab wanted us to have in the show because we couldn't get this one in time so we were more than happy to do that so we put it on got it to the show so now we have the new 3r ultralight from alley cab it's a really cool new design a tent and we'll also show you guys that as well but that's the one that's going to live with this truck and go on the next big international trip with it with x overland so let's get inside and check it out all right guys well i tracked down brian from goose gear and we're going to get kind of an inside look of goose gear as a whole and my big question for him is uh like what made you start developing drawer systems for overland rigs had a big time issue with uh, was working crazy hours we were in the cabinet business uh, my wife at the time was in uh, countertop manufacturing we did cabinets we merged the two and uh, it was 2010 ish okay started getting an edge an edge just an itch excuse me just to want to get out and explore okay. and yeah. do something and found out that you could go out and explore camp explore camp explore camp yep and i never thought about that like we never did camping when I was a kid really like that. Yeah. And so it just blew my mind that that was something you could do. And I was hooked just watching the videos and said, that's it. I'm going to sell my big truck and buy a forerunner. We're going to build a drawer for it and, and go out. So we drew it up in CAD, drew it up in 3D, sent yeah. it to the machine, built this beautiful maple drawer, put it in the forerunner. And I posted it on AmericanAdventurist.com. Okay. And uh, Dave Bennett, the founder of the company, yeah. American Adventurist, reached out a few months later and sent me a message. Hey, would you want to build a interior system for my Tacoma with a flip pack? And I said, yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> and then I Googled what a flip pack was and was like, holy cow, this is incredible. Awesome. And uh, so that was it. And he said, hey, there's a market. And he very well educated guy and knows the market. And he taught me a lot about it and said, hey, this is a, a good opportunity for someone to jump in. There's not a lot of people doing it in the States. Yeah, so, that that's was, awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was the intro. That's one thing led to here. another. <laughs> yeah, and one thing led to another, and this business finally outgrew the cabinet business, and we decided, you know what, I'm going to focus on the one that's more fun, which is the overland side. And yeah, that's awesome. That's what we do now. So I guess we could use our example of our Sequoia. When you get a vehicle or when you're going to design a product from scratch, what's usually the first step of creating a new product? Oh, yeah. So for us, the first step we're going to do is we're going to take bring the vehicle in yeah and we're going to get a couple of people together in the company and we're going to just look at the vehicle in its stock form okay we're going to open up the trunk like on the sequoia we opened up the trunk we looked at the second row seats 
and we just said, okay, what, what are the options and what's the best use of this vehicle? Yeah. And because every vehicle is a little bit different, right? You know, some vehicles people want to sleep in, some vehicles you don't want to sleep in, it's too short, you know, yeah. so Subaru Forester, you know, maybe too short for most people, but it's still a great rig. Mm -hmm. um, so we just sit down and look at it. And the Sequoia was a unique one, obviously, as we talked about, the battery. Yeah. There's yeah. a hybrid battery in the back of the trunk, which we've never had to encounter. Yeah. But that kind of changed our mind on how it would work. Um, and then after we sit down with the team and we kind of say, okay, this is what we think is going to be the best fit and the best function of storage capacity. Uh, also, we take into consideration how much is it going to cost to build the product because obviously you can build anything, but it's mm -hmm. a question you have to be able to sell it. And so you got to make it affordable. Yeah. And uh, so we just go through that process. Once we do that, then we start sketching stuff out. We take okay. the seats out. We look at what the vehicle looks like empty. If, uh, take all the seats out that we're thinking about taking out, second row, third row, whatever it has. Yeah. Uh, and then we sit there and sketch it out. From there, we sit down inside the vehicle and actually start taking just rough measurements. And that's really to compare it to our existing modules, our okay. camp kitchens and icebox and drawer modules, mm -hmm. to find out which ones are of our standard product line would actually work in that vehicle. Okay. Once we have that, then we can start going, okay, let's start actually taking some measurements. Let's scan the vehicle. Let's throw it in the system, get some key 3D uh, renderings drawn up and see what we can put together. From there, we start cutting stuff on yeah. our CNC machine. Yeah, I was going to have you show us this section. So this seems like kind of the meat of the operation here. Yeah. Where this, this is where it is all created. Basically. Yeah, this is where it all starts. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. We get an order comes in from somebody. Okay. You know, it runs in. Uh, we have a stack of, you know, four by eight, five by five material. So when someone places an order for a seat delete or a rear plate for a forerunner, Jeep, whatever, okay, then we actually build everything to order. Uh, you know, oh, we have, okay. We have over 3,000 SKUs that we sell. Wow. And with 3,000 yeah. SKUs and all of our product is vehicle size proportions. Yeah, you can't just stock We literally that. don't have a place to put that much stuff. Yeah. Um, plus the cost of it would just be overwhelming. They'll load this, the machine with wood and then yep. he'll open the program for whatever vehicle part has been purchased and then he'll start cutting it. So when this is done cutting, okay. it actually has a vacuum system and a push system. So it takes and pushes oh. those pieces onto this giant conveyor belt. This is like what you'd see at a grocery store. Okay. But all of the pieces push out and as it pushes, it goes past this vacuum, it goes past the top vacuum and it gets surface vacuumed. So that all of the sawdust, yeah. that's why you don't see a lot of sawdust on the ground. That's awesome. Because we have a really good dust collection system that basically tries to keep all of that into a dust collection system that keeps the filters, it, it's all filtered air. So I love it. it's a lot safer for the guys too. Oh yeah. So this will actually feed out and the whole sheet will be living on this table. And then he pulls pieces off as they're done and then throws them on the cart. Here. So this is basically all the product that was cut. Um, everything you see here was like, this is from week three. So this okay. was actually just ordered by somebody about okay. a week and a half ago. And it's on the cart right now. It'll go to sanding section over here from sanding, then it goes down to Line X down the street. Okay. And they actually do all of the Line X coat, spray coat. And then from here, it looks like you probably hand sand it or like do some yeah, sort so of Yeah, so it's a sanding. combination of hand sanding uh, okay. and that's all done over here. Okay. So this yeah. is basically a, a downdraft vacuum table and then we have a HEPA filter vacuum that's hooked up to all the sanders. So okay. the guys use these guys <laughs> that's um, and they'll sand on top of this table and they'll do most of the surface sanding and the corner sanding with mm -hmm. the air sanders. Okay. And then they do have some, some like this hole. If there's a burr in here, they'll actually go through and clean this up. Okay. And send this off to the next stage, which is off to Line X. So yeah, so after it comes back from Line X, it's ready for install. So now let's go check out our Sequoia, which is right next door. Let's I saw. do it. Yeah. There she right. is. There it is. Yeah, let's see it. Here's the Sequoia. So what it sounded like is it was a, a bit of a feat with that battery from the hybrid system. So I'm very excited to see what you came up with. Ooh. Yeah, it does sit up, doesn't it? Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, this is very usable though. Oh, absolutely. It's, and it's different at first, but it's very usable. Yeah, and that's kind of what we thought. We, you know, we had to raise it up a good four, four and a half inches here. And yeah. we also had to have a room for the aluminum extrusion to run front to back to carry the load because yeah. it's such a long span because this truck is so long that we had to really create a ton of support for it. Yeah. So we also put this wall in and this wall is really does two things. It's the load bearing support for the, for the top plate. Okay. But it also protects the battery system because the battery system is literally on the other side of that. And it's yeah. just a thin layer of sheet metal protecting it so yeah we wanted good. to prevent someone throwing their high lift or something back here and stabbing their lithium battery yep. it might be a bad day in the field so yeah no that's yeah. awesome and then uh, after thinking more we figured you know what we're gonna split it this way and did a 60 and a 40 delete so it's the first time we've ever done a third row delete in a 60 ah. and a 40 configuration yeah yeah so what that does allows you to keep your 40 percent seat or your 60 percent seat or you can take out both and do 100 percent delete well yeah and uh, i mean 
that's a great option because like we were discussing earlier, if you have three kids, you have two seats, but yep. then where's the third kid go? So yeah. you have the option to have storage on one side or the other. Yeah, exactly. And so that's really neat. One thing I do like about this is we finally have a spot to put our ARB jack because right. it's always been a conundrum of where to store it. It may end up somewhere else, but I mean, that seems like a very logical spot to put it because it's right there. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We'll see you. All right, guys, we're back from Goose Gear. Had a great drive back. We actually stopped for an overnight camping trip to kind of do a shakedown run outside of Las Vegas. But we found out a lot of things about the truck and about our current situation with the modifications and we have kind of a game plan of what's next. But let me show you kind of through the truck as it sets right now. We have most of the stuff bolted on, but a lot of it was done for SEMA very quickly before SEMA. So we weren't worried about wiring up lights or winches or anything like that. We just needed to get it physically on the truck. Now we have a light bar and a winch in there that we need to get hooked up and wired. On top, we have our roof rack. Kind of thinking about going a different direction with the adapt light bar. Again, we just put it on for the show to have it. Uh, we're kind of looking at with the future trip coming up, we might try a completely different style of light um, that we haven't tried before that'll kind of change the look. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what we decide on it. We got the tent on that we are gonna be running for the next trip. Inside the truck, we need to install the ham radio. Um, same exact install that we did on Orion. So ICOM 5100A ham radio is going in. We just need to do some power ports for our dash cam GoPro power. The Goose Gear system, we love the modularity of it and we're actually gonna utilize the modularity of it. So let me show you what we're planning on doing there. We also need to put an air compressor in this truck. And as of right now, there's no room under the hood or any kind of mounting bracket options. So what we have found is that right in here under this cubby is a great little spot that'll fit our ARB twin air compressor that we already have sitting here. So we'll probably mount that there. It'll be right here next to the battery for wiring, so that's convenient. And then we'll probably just put a little hidden chuck in the back. Around the back, oh, though we love this system and what Brian did, we're actually going to remove this side and have just the platform here. We're gonna leave this drawer um, for just storage, but this side is gonna come out more than likely and then that'll allow us to have more capacity to carry all of our soft bags, sleeping bags, because that's essentially what this vehicle on the three truck team does, is it's a gear hauler. And so we're gonna remove this side out. This is where a team member will sleep. We'll still have the storage underneath of it. Um, we're gonna run all the electrical and the red arc system in a cubby underneath of here. As of right now, that's where it stands, but we love the option to be able to remove it or put it back in as the as the role changes for this truck in the future. We need to put some sort of lighting up here, probably National Luna touch lights up here because there's no rear lighting from the factory. So in our next episode of Shop Talk, we're gonna start doing some installs, start wiring, hooking things up, getting it working. We're gonna keep going on this build and we'll see you guys on the next one.